What is going on everybody and to the No DQ Galaxy, this is Cindy G here and today's video, this is going to be our review video for NXT TakeOver Chicago 2. And joining me here is none other than Certified G, Jeff. How's it going and how was TakeOver, like from your perspective? I'm doing good, Cindy, and NXT TakeOver didn't disappoint. Awesome. It was really, 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 really good. Oh, yeah. Like, this year's TakeOver, amazing. As always, like, they definitely knock it out of the park, especially with a couple of the matches that was by far outstanding. So we're going to get into it right now. So for the opening of the match you have, it's the NXT Tag Team Championship match between the champ and Disputed Era versus the team of Danny Burch and Orly Lorcan formerly known as Biff Music to the people in the indies. And so I have to say this is by far a really solid opener of the match. Although the fact that you have is the majority of the Chicago crowd chanting for Undisputed Era and they were booing at Orly and Danny. Like, this is pretty surreal. I mean, you have Kyle and Roderick along with Adam Cole as the top heel of the tag team division. And then Orly and Danny as a baby face. So, to me, it's pretty surreal. Don't you think, Jeff? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it was a good match. It was, like you said, it was a good opener. Um, Chicago is a ruckus crowd, so you know mm -hmm. that the heels are going to go over more than the baby faces. I think also it's because nobody really knows only Lorcan and Danny Birch if they don't watch... NXT TakeOver week or NXT TV Weekly. <clears throat> you had some... It, it was back and forth, you know. Towards the end, people started cheering a little bit for yep. Danny Burch and Oni Lurkin. They got a standing ovation after the match was over. Um, they cheered mostly for the Undisputed Era, like we said. Overall, it was a good match. I enjoyed it. I'm glad the Undisputed mm -hmm. Era retained the tag team titles. Um... Unfortunately, Adam Cole got thrown out of the re or out of the match. Oh my god! And they, were, and they were booing it, or they were chanting, you know, BS. BS. Yep, I <laughs> laughed. So it, it was good for for an opening match, you know. Kyle O'Reilly, he's doing bad. He's doing good. Roddy's always been up there as well. So. I, like it, it was a really, 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 really good match. I agree. I mean, both tag teams, they bring out a lot of technicality going on, especially you have is I'm really impressed with Ordy Lorcan, especially like how much he does like two dives and a strike towards, I think it was Kyle O'Reilly. And so that kind of brings like more of a more respect for who is Ordy Lorcan be besides indie indies as well, especially with yeah. Danny Birch, formerly known as Martin Stone. Both team, I give them mad respect. Like, they give, give their all despite, like, the Chicago crowd being all ruckus and all that. But I love you, Chicago, by the way. But anywho, I'm glad that Undisputed Era won, especially the fact that you have, have both teams already dominating the tag team division but we'll see what's going to happen next so far like glad undisputed era retain good for them so i'm looking forward to what's going to bring it next so really much a good opener so far jeff yeah it really was oh yeah so anywho let's go ahead and move on to the next match which is the singles match between velveteen dream versus ricochet so jeff can you, um, let's go ahead and start with you. All right. Well, we had Velveteen Dream come out with, uh, I guess, Hollywood Hogan mm. slash Prince <laughs> Puma. Puma. <laughs> and he was, uh, uh, he, uh, Velveteen had a dream that said dream is over or something like that. <clears throat> Ricochet came out. They had a good match. You know, they had some good spots in there. Velveteen, every, they were always trying to one-up each other. At one point in the match, you had Ricochet do the elbow that Velveteen does, and mm -hmm. I think he hit it. And then you had uh, 
Velveteen Dream do a flip over the ring, you know, trying to up Ricochet. Then towards the end of the match, you had Velveteen Dream try to hit his elbow from one side of the ring to the other side. Oh, yeah. He missed that. Yeah. And uh, Velveteen, or Ricochet hits a 630 splash on him. Yep. That's him fall. Both guys are excellent workers. Yep. I've known, or I, I really don't know him, but I've watched Velveteen Dream, a.k.a. Patrick Clark, from when he started out here in MCW for wrestling with Leo Rush. Nice. And when he was out here, he was, you know, he was really on top of it. And then I think he eventually did uh, combat zone wrestling or whatever it is for a little bit. Then he did tough enough as Patrick Clark. He didn't, unfortunately, he didn't win tough enough, but they saw potential in him. And so he went from this not known guy to I think the hottest act, one of the hottest acts in NXT, Velveteen Dream. Now you said earlier today that he might be going on the main roster here soon. I hope he doesn't. Yeah. It's too soon. He's only he's only 22 years old, mm-hmm. and he's he's this phenomenal. Take it from AJ Styles. He's got the personality. He's got. The in-ring work, he's got the charisma. I mean, as soon as it comes out, people chant Velveteen right away. As soon as that music hits, it the crowd goes crazy for him. Now, if he went to the main roster, it's gonna it, it'll be that it'll be like that for a few weeks, and then it'll fizzle out like nothing happened. Ricochet, he's a good wrestler mm-hmm. as well. I really didn't get to watch him as Prince Puma and Lucha Underground or. The other uh, indie promotions he was in, but he was really re- he he's really good. I think he's got the potential to one day challenge for maybe the NXT North American Championship. Oh yeah, and even the NXT Championship. Him and Alistair Black would tear the house down as well. Uh, um, those were my thoughts of the match. So, Cindy, let's get your thoughts. Well, I could have agreed. With you, Jeff, because, like, both guys, they put out one hell of a show. I did create a poll on Twitter during the match saying which um, ring gear that you guys reminded of. And I got 67% Hulk Hogan, 33% Prince Puma. And to me, Hulk Hogan is Hulk Hogan. So that's how Valentin is paying a tribute to him. That's pretty awesome. With Ricochet, he did bring his A game, especially he was in the indie circus for... 13 years before coming to WWE. I did see him briefly on Lucha Underground, and he is by far, by far phenomenal. So I would like to point out that one of the most highlight of the match so far is like when Ricochet actually did um, Velveteen Dreams' his finisher, the Death Valley um, yeah. slam. Like, yeah. I was like, holy crap like are they switching like their finisher back and forth like it's kind of like show like you know the whole storyline goes anything they can do they can do better for that so they're bringing like both of their showcasing so far now regarding what velveteen dream trying to do the elbow drop further to the ring to me i was somewhat not impressed for what the hell Velveteen Dream is doing. I guess he's trying to prove to Ricochet that he can do whatever he can for for how better it is or whatever. Yeah. It's been far along, you guys, so I'm just looking through the notes real quick. But at the end, Ricochet did the beautiful 6.30 and 1. So yeah. this is by far another great match. And regarding with the rumor about Velveteen Dream moving to the main roster, big mistake. I would say we should just kept him until after the Survivor Series weekend. Like I could see, like you know, him debuting that by the end of this year to the main roster. And but we'll see, like how they're gonna like keep it up with him like through this particular storyline but for ricochet i would like to see him being the contender for the north american title against adam cole i mean give or take or possibly a nxt title match against alistair black but that's too soon to tell so overall another outstanding match 
So anyway, let's go ahead and move on here. So next up you have is the NXT Women's Championship match between the champ, the queen of spade herself, Shayna Baszler versus Nikki Cross. Cheers to that. Shayna Baszler retains the title. Thank effing God. Let's talk about the match. I feel that this match was... Mm, not the best, not the worst. It was pretty decent. You have the start of like Shayna was about to do to be a couple kicks, but then Nikki did counter, and then she started to act all crazy. Like she wanted Shayna to like hit her as much as she can. But then overall, you have both ladies did battle it up outside of the ring for the most part. Part, but. I guess you could say it's like, I feel that Shayna is putting a lot of work than Nikki because of her, like, Nikki's crazy gimmick that she wanted to feel, like, the pressure, especially just to get that title. But so far, Shayna did the submission hold to Nikki where, where you can see how Nikki was, like, smiling, like, creepingly. And then when she smiled, you can tell, like, she's about to pass out. And that's when Shayna... Did, did um submit it hard to her and then she retained the title. So that finisher kind of reminds me of a horror movie. So you guys comment down below which horror mo- movie kind of remind you of that particular finisher where you saw Nikki was smiling and then she all of a sudden passed out. Like it kind of creeps me out a little bit, but so far a decent match. And hopefully we'll see what's going to happen with Shayna Baszler's next. I'm thinking we're probably going to see another continuing feud between Shayna and Nikki and possibly bringing two more people to cause a Fatal 4 rematch for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. However, there is a rumor that Nikki's might be going to be called up to the main roster joining Sanity since Sanity has an even debut on TV except for the promos and house shows. But it's not going to happen. As I stated before, Nikki is better off by herself. Simple as that. So take it away, Certified G. Well, like you said, Shannon Baszler did defeat Nikki Cross by submission. That uh, The whole match was like crazy and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. you had Nikki telling her, come on, do it, do it, do it. And like every time Shannon would do something... Nikki would have something back for her. Shayna didn't know what what to do. Then, you know, during the match, Shayna found her way back. And Nikki's just crazy. Yep. Like you said, uh, she had, Shayna had her under submission hold. And Nikki just started smiling. And I was like, what the heck? Is yep. That? I thought maybe, you know, she was somehow going to get out of it. But next thing you know, she just, like, closed her eyes and passed out. So I guess it's a good way to protect Nikki Cross because mm-hmm. she didn't technically tap out; she just passed out. Shayna Baszler is looking better and better. Uh, her mic work needs to be a little bit better, I think. Agree. But all in all, she's a good NXT Women's Champion. As soon as that bell rings, she turns into a badass mm-hmm. and does what she needs to do: snap, crack, or pop, or tap, I should say. Yes. And. As far as the next opponent, I could see Bianca Be- uh, Bianca Belair yep. being her next opponent down the road. Mm-hmm. She already beat Dakota Kai. She's already beaten everybody else down there. She's beaten Kyrie Sane already. So I think her next opponent will be the EST of NXT, Bianca Belair. But Shane is my girl. She's going to be my girl for a long time until she goes to the main roster. And we'll see what goes from there. So what's the next match, Cindy? Well, the next match we have is the NXT Championship match between the champ, Aleister Black, versus Lars Sullivan. So you want to take it away, Jeff? Yeah, I guess I can. All right, so we had Aleister Black defeat Lars Sullivan. For what it was, it was an all right match. You had that big botch towards the end (laughs) where he hit the... Try to hit the black match. He missed, but Lars Sullivan still took the bump like he got hit. It took a couple of ma- black matches, I think two of them, to, uh, for Black to 
beat Lars. Lars, he looked pretty good. You know, he did dominate Alistair for a while in the match. Alistair found his way back. Like I said, he hit the couple black masses, got the one, two, three. Where does Lars Sullivan go for here? I have no idea. As far as Alistair Black, he could have so many opponents, mm-hmm. you know. So we'll 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 see where where it goes for these guys. What do you think about it, Cindy? Well, honestly, this match I kind of zone out a bit because I know we were coming off from one of the top two amazing match, and then the NXT Women's um, Championship match was kind of like lackluster a bit. But overall, with that particular match, it was pretty impressive. But again, not the best, not the worst, but pretty decent. And so far, the majority of the matches you have is Alistair and Lars, like, you know, brawling outside of the ring, and then they got into the ring. And then you have is like a lot of like kickouts, like after they're exchanging their signature move to a finisher. This is like a other typical like main roster match where like you got couple people you got like some wrestler like like trying to pin after a finisher or a very significant signature move and then kick out after a two count so it was a lot of back and forth going on overall so regarding the whole like botch situation when i saw the part where alistair did give the black the first attempt to the black mask to lars you can see that it is a total botch like he was just standing there, but then he pretended he kind of fell that da- fell down. So it's kind of like, yeah, whatever. And then like after that botch, you saw they like, Alistair did um, strike a knee to um, strike Lars's jaw with his knee, and then followed by a second black mass. And of course, that's when Alistair retained that title. So hopefully, we'll see like a better competitor for Alistair Black. Especially like for our takeover Brooklyn Four. Regarding Lars, again, there was a rumor saying that they're probably gonna bring Lars to the main event. Not main event, main roster. <laughs> I hope not. Like, if they put him to the main roster, of course, it's gonna be a huge mistake. He's probably gonna be lost in a shuffle. But yeah, oh well. I agree with you. Yeah. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the main event match that was a holy crap moment. You have it's the Chicago Street Fight match against Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa. So for the starter, you have Johnny wrestling like outside backstage, well backstage, walking out. And you have like some of the Chicago crowd kind of like having some mixed reaction like a cheer or a boo and then you saw Candice LeRae holding the crunches she gave it to him and she's telling him to kick his ass that was amazing like hell I would say that to my fiance but yeah anywho so far you have Ciampa coming out you have a lot of crowd like cheering for him so hard and then you have his Tommaso Ciampa coming out with no music which is better for him because I'm yeah. not a fan of the whole Dolph Ziggler record scratching theme he has but but the no theme music suits perfectly for him and you can hear a lot of like boos and a whole chant and stuff like that so it was pretty impressive so regarding the match holy crap this is by far Best match of the year so far. And best feud of the year, technically. So to point out some of the highlight is that you saw that Johnny and Tommaso did brawl out after the bell rang. They brawl out outside of the ring and then through the back here where there's a crowd. And you saw there's this one guy that was holding the use this sign, Johnny. And then Tommaso did... Um, snatched that sign away from him and you saw that he's trying to rip it but it didn't happen and then while they were kind of like brawling out a bit a bit then Johnny did grab the sign from on the floor where that guy had and inside was a stop sign I was like this is the most smartest idea ever and number two how the hell did 
security did not check his sign. Well, well, normally when it comes to like people bringing the sign, they have to just look at the design and not, and that's it. Not just like to feel the um the paper material or anything. But honestly, this is like a very smart idea for that fan. So whoever you are, thank you for bringing your si the sign inside the stop sign. So yeah. So anyway, this match amazing and like I could talk for hours and hours and hours but I'm gonna cut this short real quick because like I know that I just don't want to like go make this a long discussion I know you have a lot to say Jeffrey because you know how excited I am talking about one of the best match of all time so you have the Chicago crowd chanting ECW Johnny wrestling and then you have like another crowd that was like chanting a hold to Tommaso F you and all that stuff this is like a very compelling match you have is trash can, steel chairs. And also, I think there was ladder involved. Do, don't you remember? Mm, no. I don't think there was. Yeah. But one of the highlights I would point out is that when Tommaso did, did um, brought out the bolt cutter and he started cutting the, the extension of the rope, you can tell that he's starting to take out the ring floor and the mattings. And you can see, like, just an exposed wooded ring. Like, holy crap. This is, like, Attitude Era style all over. Like, holy crap. Um, Jeff, do you want to continue on? Because yeah. this is, like, a lot to cover to sink in. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like you said... Best match of the night. Mm -hmm. I, well, at least I think it was. Feud of the year. Mm -hmm. um, Ciampa has got that real heel heat. People from the main roster need to <laughs> learn from him. Um, what else happened? You had the spot where they were right out in the crowd and they got up to the big box and they climbed up. Ciampa took off Johnny's wedding ring. Oh, off, yeah. And Johnny mm. hit, uh, drove oh. him through the table, and we thought that was the end of the match. Mm -hmm. And Ch uh, the Champa was put on the stretcher. Johnny mm. took him back down, put the handcuffs on him, and it looked and it was beating the crap out of him. And it looked like Ch Gargano was gonna win. And Champa. Hit a DDT on Gargano onto the wooden floor with both hand or with his hands handcuffed, mind you. Covered him for the one, two, three. The whole building was booing Champa. Uh, Candice LeRae came out after the match to check on Gargano. Um, but I, I'm trying to think of the other big spots that happened in that match. I mean, you mentioned the stop sign guy. Yep. Um. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to I know that Johnny did um, take out his belt and then he started to hit Tommaso so hard that you could hear the crowd chanting, you deserve it, you deserve it. Like he struck him so hard that he had to wrap his belt around his hand and then he started to strike it so hard. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Like that is like, holy crap, by far one of the highlights of it before so everything. So we are getting Tomasa Gargano 3 at TakeOver 4, mm -hmm. which, I mean, I don't know how you could top an unsanctioned match in the last man stand, or Chicago Street Fight. The guys were saying maybe, uh, I think Stefan Osborne, the Wizard of Osborne, mm -hmm. said uh, an I Quit match. Yep. I had, men I had mentioned... Um, what what did I mention? I can't remember now. Did you mention the Iron Man match? Yeah, I mean, they, you could do a 30-man Iron Man mm. match. But I, I thought about it, and you really couldn't do it. I mean, you could, but then you wouldn't have time for everybody else. So, I mean, you, the only other way would be an I Quit match. So that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Mm. Um, Gargano and Ciampa, like I said before... They are having the feud of the year right now. I agree. The, story, the storytelling is so amazing that I care more about this 
and I was so more invested in this than I would have been for Raw or SmackDown in the past couple of months. Agree. That, yeah, there's few by far amazing storytelling so far. And real quick, just to finish up my thoughts about like almost the ending, when I saw that Tommaso did take out the wedding ring and he's um, Tommaso took out Johnny's wedding ring and he spat it. Yeah. I was, yeah, was crazy. I was gasping so hard. Like, like to me, it's kind of like a sign of complete disrespect, but beyond perfect. Yeah, and really yeah. And then with that whole finisher going on, I was like, what the hell had just happened? Like, we all thought that Johnny was going to be the one that's going to win the match, but Tommaso finishing off, that was unexpected. And right at the end, like, you saw on the end credit that the whole Chicago crowd was chanting F you, Champa, so hard. Like, it was pretty hilarious to me. It was. Yeah. Like, I, it was like the perfect ending to it is just to cuss him out while Tommaso was just smiling and waving yeah, yeah like like a Sicilian psycho killer he is yeah. so yeah so I can't wait for their hopefully their final match at TakeOver Brooklyn 4 I would have to say it's probably going to be an I quit match because think of this way you have a SummerSlam weekend. If one of them lost and it's an I quit, then one of them will be debuting to the main roster, either on Raw or SmackDown. Yep. Yeah. Or one could go mm -hmm. to Raw, one could go to SmackDown. That too. So that would that would be like a perfect win-win situation. So overall, I can't wait to see what's going to happen on NXT. That w that makes me want to watch NXT more now just to like continue on with that whole feud of the year storytelling between Johnny and Tommaso and also Candace as well. So looking forward to it. And what a way to end TakeOver Chicago. Amazing. Yes, it was. Yes. So overall... I'm going to go ahead and talk about my my favorite and my least favorite. My favorite match from TakeOver would have to be... It's a no-brainer, you guys. It's the Chicago Street Fight. I mean, come on. They brought back the somewhat of an Attitude Era vibe to it, but just for one night. Um, my least favorite match of the night, I would have to say, is the NXT Championship match. Like... I again I was kind of not too fond of that particular match especially there was like so many back and forth going on with the two counts and that botch move but those are my least favorite and for letter grade wise I'm gonna give it a solid A what about you all right well whew, that's a tough one but I'm going to agree with you. Chicago Street Fight was my favorite match of the night. Mm -hmm. um, my least favorite, I don't know. I really, even though the NXT Championship match was decent, I really can't say it was my least favorite. I liked, I enjoyed all matches. Yeah. All, all the performers put on a good show, each and every match. The crowd was always high. There was not one silent moment in there. Mm-hmm. Champa has the most heel heat in NXT right now. Hopefully, when he goes to the main roster eventually, hopefully that'll continue on with him, and they will continue having him without no theme music because it works perfectly for him right now. Um, a letter grade, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna have to give it a solid A. You know what? Screw that. I'm giving it an A plus. I'm gonna go with an A plus. Screw that. Good. Um, other than that, I mean, nothing. NXT takeovers, they never disappoint. When NXT takeover first started back, uh, 2014, I want to say, from then until now, it's always been a good show. Never disappoints. Agree. 
I could have agreed more. And like NXT, like regarding with the whole storyline build up and how the matches are going to be executing to the day of the show, they always knock it out of the park, guys. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen in August for Brooklyn Four. Yes, Jeff. One thing, I, one thing I want to point out to everybody out there: this is a couple of days after NXT Takeover, so uh, there was an announcement on WWE. They are having after the UK tournament uh, on the twenty third and twenty fourth in July. They will start having WWE NXT UK. They will be having it's their own brand, their own GM. They will have. They will be having a women's title wow. and a tag team division as well. So people who want to see something different than American style wrestling, watch. you can watch this in the UK NXT. So I don't think it'll disappoint. But that's enough about that. Um, you want to do your plug, Cindy? And wow. Sounds good. This is amazing announcement. I'm going to try and definitely glue it in for that as well. So, anywho, let's go ahead and do our plugs. So, I'm going to go ahead and go first. You guys can follow me at nodq.com slash Cindy. That's going to take you directly to my Twitter page. And you can also follow me at simply underscore C underscore OK on Instagram and on my YouTube channel as well where I post indie wrestling hype videos slash review videos. Also, a music video reaction video as well and take it away jeff oh you guys can follow me at nodq.com slash jeff that takes me to my twitter page you guys can follow me on instagram at nodq underscore certified gm on facebook as well go to pro wrestling tees.com search nodq uh grab all the nodq shirts virtue rage's shirt mm -hmm. my boy virtue uh Go to patreon.com slash interstate Kyle. Uh, donate to him, and he will give you guys surprises for each for the donations you guys give. And that's it for the Certified G. Alrighty, and also make sure to follow everybody at FromNoDQ.com from Aaron Riff, Jeff Meacham, Greg Cherry, Virtue, Interstate Kyle, which by the way, he is doing okay. TJS, K Fit Candy S, and Stefan Osborne, and also me and Jeff as well. And also make sure to follow up nodq.com for all the latest news in WWE and other wrestling related news via social media and the website as well. And subscribe to this channel as well. Make sure you comment down below what do you think of your thoughts on NXT TakeOver predictions of what's going to happen next and etc etc make sure you share it you like it and hit that bell button for all the notification as well and one last thing is to the people in the bay area or anywhere in california aaron has several tickets left for the new japan pro wrestling presents the g1 special so if you still interested in going to new japan pro wrestling Make sure to email Aaron at nodqmisc at gmail.com so that way you can get your tickets. And also um, hang out with Aaron, myself, and the rest of the group as well. So anyway, you guys, that is it for now. This is Cindy G and Certified G himself. And hope you guys have a great day. Cheers. <laughs>